Hello, 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 hello. I want to discuss with you the solutions to the problem, let's call it the pinhole problem. So the idea is you make a pinhole in a screen and you project the image that is produced by that pinhole, by the light that goes through the pinhole, you project that somewhere on the wall. In our case, that wall is three meters away from the pinhole. And the idea now is, what would be the diameter of that pinhole to get optimum resolution of the image of the wall. It means if you make the pinhole much larger, the resolution would be lower. It would also mean if you made the pinhole much smaller, the resolution would also be lower. That's what it means. We derived in our previous problem the distance on the screen, we call that the x-axis, we derived for wavelength lambda what is the distance on the wall between the two closest points, one on either side of the maximum light, for which there is destructive interference. And I call that W for Walter, remember? <laughs> if you have a circular opening, then of course the diffraction pattern on the wall will also be circular. And I gave you a simple fact, which is not so easy to calculate, but I gave you the answer that in the case of a circular opening, that distance between the two points closest to the maximum where there is complete destructive interference is 1.22 times larger than if it were a slit. And the size of the slit would be the same as the diameter of the pinhole. Well, that's a given. You can use that. And now comes the question, what is now the optimum size of the diameter of the pinhole, which I will call capital D, so that we have the best resolution that we can get on the wall? We have agreed that we would use for this problem half a micron for the wavelength of light. So are you ready? You see here, the diffraction pattern of the pinhole on the wall. It is circular. I only show you the cross section in one direction. So this is that central maximum. This point is complete destructive interference and this is complete destructive interference. And in size, millimeters, centimeters, that is 1.2 times this W for Walter in the case of single slit, if D of the single slit is the same as the diameter of the pinhole. We calculated in our previous problem that WS is 2 capital L lambda divided by D, D was the diameter, not the diameter, was the thickness of the slit. And now, if the pinhole has the same D as the slit has, the same D as diameter, all we have to do is multiply this by a factor 1.2. It's really 1.22, but <laughs> let's call it 1.2. So that becomes then that from here to here on the wall, this would be the linear size, 2.4 capital L lambda divided by D. Now, if you want 
the image that the pinhole produces on the wall in the absence of any diffraction, then of course that image is a circular image which has exactly the same di diameter as the pinhole independent of wavelength. So the light distribution would be simply like this, where right? this is then the diameter of the pinhole. So if you want this effect to be roughly equal to that effect in terms of width on the wall, then this here, 2.4 times L lambda divided by D, has to be D. So this then has to be that. When you do that, you will find that the best diameter for the pinhole would be 1.9 millimeters. Many books prefer to leave this factor of 2 out. I'm not going to argue with you about that. So they make this smaller. So if you take the factor of 2 out, the 2.4 becomes simply 1.2 again. And if now you solve the equation, you make that equal to D, you find that the optimum diameter of the pinhole would be 1.34 millimeters. Okay, so that's why I gave you a lot of leeway in the answer. I would say, if I had <laughs> on an exam to answer this problem, I would say it is roughly 1.6 millimeters. And if you find 1.9, we'll still be friends. And if you find 1.3, we'll still be friends. So it's roughly 1.6 plus or minus 0.3 millimeters would be a perfectly okay answer. So the idea is that if you, if you made that pinhole four times larger, then, indeed, <laughs> The diffraction pattern would be much, much smaller, but now the contribution not due to the diffraction would be four times larger. And so it should be clear to you that you lose. You lose in resolution. If you want to make the diameter of the pinhole much, much smaller, well, then the geometrical effect is very small because the image that the pinhole forms without diffraction becomes then very, very small. But now the diffraction becomes very large, so you lose again. So that's the idea why this is roughly the best value to get the best resolution. Of course, we have assumed a distance of 3 meters and we have assumed a wavelength of half a micron. The distance L, of course, can change a great deal depending upon how you build your pinhole camera. If you made a more practical pinhole camera whereby the distance from the pinhole to your screen is four times smaller, so more like 80 centimeters, then, of course, the optimum size of the pinhole must now be twice as small. Because remember, d times d is d squared. And so if L goes down by a factor of 4, then d would go down by a factor of 2. What is interesting here, that there are two pieces of physics and they are totally different. One of them, the, the diffraction, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller the larger the diameter of the pinhole. If you make the pinhole very, very small, then the diffraction pattern becomes larger and larger. And so there is somewhere a position where you reach more or less the optimum. Okay, have a nice day, take care and surely, surely we will be friends.
That's always a given.